Today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be reviewing cell physiology and how this applies to surgery. I got 10 questions for you. Let's do it. All right, welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. I'm pumped you're here with us today and we're gonna do something a little bit different. For those preparing for the AB site or the American Board of Surgery in-service training exam, or maybe your surgical shelf exam in medical school or the surgery board exams, we're gonna go through 10 questions on cell biology and physiology, how this applies to surgery. Let's get started right now. The reference for today, we're gonna to be going through Pfizer's Absite Review Book. We're also gonna be using Savison's Textbook of Surgery. I have some other references and all of the links are in the description below. All right, let's get started with the first question. So the first question, the systemic inflammatory response syndrome leads to an increase in interstitial fluid as fluid passes through which of the following? Tight junctions, gap junctions, desmosomes, G proteins, or the pores of cone? All right, what do you think? Okay, so the correct answer is tight junctions. So when we look at these, we have to know the difference between what's a tight junction or a gap junction. What is a G protein? What are the pores of cone? So tight junctions are the cell-cell adhesion. That's the connections between cells, so fluid can or cannot pass between them. So in the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, you get a gap in those tight junctions and fluid can pass into the interstitial space. So what's a gap junction? Gap junction is that communication between cells. When we go down and we look at desmosomes, a desmosome, we're gonna to get to that later. Those are adhesion molecules. And then of course, G proteins are used for intracellular signaling. And the pores of cone, if you didn't know this, these are small communication channels in the lung where uh, air can pass from one alveoli to the other. All right, let's go to question two. So question two, which of the following represents the cation with the greatest intracellular concentration? Is it sodium, potassium, bicarbonate, chloride, or phosphate? All right, well, if you guessed potassium, you know your intracellular and extracellular cations and anions. And so here, I want you to commit this table to memory. This goes over the anions and the cations, and it splits them up into intracellular and extracellular concentrations. It's really important to know these, not only so you can get the questions right on the exam, but when you're reviewing labs, these numbers will make a lot more sense if you can understand which are the greatest and least concentrations in both the intracellular and extracellular compartments. All right, let's go to number three. So the third question is which of the following is an example of a glycolipid antigen on the cell membrane? Is it blood type A antigen, human leukocyte antigen, major histocompatibility complex, collagen, or prothrombin? So if you guessed blood type A antigen, you know your glycolipids, that is the correct answer. And so here going through each of these, this is one of those questions where you just have to know what are the glycolipid antigens, what are the glycoproteins. So the blood types, whether it's type A, type B, these are glycolipid antigens. When we look at the other molecules, these are typically glycoproteins and not glycolipids. All right, let's go to question four. So question four is, Methotrexate is an antifolate used in cancer therapy and inhibits a crucial enzyme involved in DNA synthesis. Which of the following phases of the cell cycle does methotrexate target? Is it prophase, G1 phase, S phase, metaphase, or the G2 phase? All right, if you guess C, the S phase or the synthesis phase, then you are correct. So let's go through each of these. 
So it's really important to understand the phases of the cell cycle. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you a diagram that's gonna help you understand all of these phases. But here are the answers to this question. So prophase, that's in mitosis. So that's where you get centromere alignment. That's the first step in mitosis. The G1 phase is the most variable. And this is where the cell lengthens. Growth factors are important in this phase. The S phase, which was the correct answer, is where DNA synthesis is occurring. Metaphase is another step in mitosis, and this is where you get chromosome alignment. And then, of course, the G2 phase, this is where you get the error checking of the duplicated chromosome. And so here I have a diagram for you so you can understand the whole cell cycle. So you can see that if we were to start out in, let's say, synthesis, we go from synthesis to G2, remember that's the error checking phase. Then we go into mitosis where the chromosomes split. And then we go back into G1 and that's where you get cell lengthening. Then we go back into synthesis, G2, mitosis, G1. And that continues until this cell goes into G0, which is the arrest phase. Now it's important to know this so you can understand how chemotherapies can target cells. And if you understand it, it's much easier to remember it. All right, let's go on to the next question. So question number five, the pancreas is an exocrine and an endocrine organ. As an exocrine organ, the pancreas secretes many different digestive enzymes. Which of the following organelles are increased in pancreatic acinar cells and responsible for the protein synthesis of these digestive enzymes? A, the nucleolus, B, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, C, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, D, the mitochondria, or E, the Golgi apparatus. Well, if you chose C, rough endoplasmic reticulum, you have a great memory of your biology classes. So let's go through each of these. So remember that the nucleolus is actually within the nucleus, and this is responsible for the creation of ribosomes. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is important in steroid synthesis and drug detoxification. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, which was the correct answer, is important for protein synthesis, as specifically for those excreted proteins. The mitochondria, this is the powerhouse of the cell, and this is where ATP is created. And the Golgi apparatus is where proteins are transported so they can be packaged for export. All right, let's do the next one. Which of the following includes macrophages, neutrophils, and dendritic cells, and functions to recruit and fuse with lysosomes to kill and digest large pathogens? Is it the phagosome, the endosome, the lysosome, the autophagosome, or the erythrocyte? All right, if you chose A, the phagosome, you were right. So let's go through each of these. So it's important to understand dendritic cells. So macrophage is really important in fighting bacteria. And these cells will engulf large, par large particles. They'll fuse with lysosomes, which have those digestive enzymes, and get rid of that bacteria or that foreign body. So phagosomes do this. Endosomes do this, but they do it for small particles. The lysosome is actually the vesicle that contains the digestive enzymes in order to get rid of these foreign bodies or bacteria. The autophagosome is actually used for intracellular degradation. And the erythrocyte, this is not a dendritic cell, this is used to carry oxygen around the body. All right, let's do the next one. So question seven, which phase of the cell cycle is most susceptible to radiation? Is it prophase, the G1 phase, S phase, metaphase or the G2 phase. So if you said the G2 phase, E, that was the correct answer. And so I won't go through all of these again, but I will point out two. So synthesis phase is actually the most radiation resistant phase. Maybe that's a little counterintuitive, but the most radioactive sensitive phase or the radiation sensitive phase is G2 and that's the error checking time in the cell cycle. All right, next question. So question number eight, VLA4 is an integrin expressed on the cell surface of stem cells, progenitor cells, B cells, and T cells. Which is the primary ligand for VLA4? Is it VCAM1, ELAM1, ICAM1, CD11B, CD18, or fibronectin? 
Now this is a bit of a trick question because there are two right answers. Both A, VCAM1 and E, fibronectin are correct. This is one of those questions that you just have to memorize in order to get these questions right. It's tough just to understand it, you gotta memorize it. So let's go through each of these. When we look at each of these, A, VCAM1, that's vascular cell adhesion molecule. B, or ELAM1, is endothelial cell adhesion molecule. C, or ICAM1, is the intercellular adhesion molecule. CD11B, CD18 is an integrin for cellular adhesion and also signaling. And then, of course, fibronectin. This is in that extracellular matrix and is also in cell adhesion. I'm gonna give you a little table here. This is gonna help you remember all of these and the associated integrin and their ligands. So we can remember that VCAM1 goes with VLA4 and fibronectin. Just remember V and VCAM and V and VLA4. ELAM1 goes with L-selectin. So remember EL, ELAM, and L-selectin. And then ICAM1 goes with CD11B, CD18. So just something you gotta remember. All right, next one. So question number nine, the Cori cycle is a metabolic pathway in which lactate created by anaerobic metabolism in muscles is transported to the liver and converted to glucose, which then returns to the muscles and is cyclically metabolized back to lactate. Which of the following is not involved in the Cori cycle? Glucose, lactate, pyruvate, acetyl-CoA, or NAD+. Well, the right answer is acetyl-CoA. That's a substrate in the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle and not involved in the Cori cycle. And so let's go through each of these. So glucose, of course, is that's the reason for the Cori cycle because muscle can't undergo gluconeogenesis. Lactate is involved in the Cori cycle because as muscle breaks down glucose through glycolysis and produces lactate, that lactate needs to be redistributed over to the liver so that we can get gluconeogenesis. So lactate is definitely involved. Pyruvate is a substrate in the Cori cycle, and I'm going to show you a diagram so you can understand this and remember it. Of course, NAD+, this is a reducing agent between NAD and NADH, and this is used in order to transfer protons in order to do the oxidation or reduction to change glucose to lactate or the opposite. Acetyl-CoA is a substrate in the Krebs cycle or the cystric acid cycle. Now, you don't have to remember all of the substrates in the Krebs cycle for the purpose of surgery or surgery exams, but it is important to remember those in the Cori cycle. So here is a diagram that I promised you, and this breaks down the reactions that are happening in the liver, the glucose and lactate that's transported in the blood, and the reactions that are happening within the muscle. Commit this to memory, know that glucose, lactate, and pyruvate are the substrates in the Cori cycle. NAD is a reducing agent in order to transfer protons. And then of course, ATP is the powerhouse of the cycle as well. And so you can see how this balances. All right, let's go to the next question. So the last question, number 10, which phase of the cell cycle has the most RNA and protein synthesis? Is it prophase, G1 phase, S phase, metaphase, or G2 phase? All right, if you said G1 phase, you got the right answer. So let's go through these again. So this is the third of the cell cycle questions, and I can tell you that this definitely comes up on these exams year after year. Understand that the G1 phase is where you're getting most of your RNA and protein synthesis, so don't let that S phase fool you. That's where you're getting the DNA synthesis. Okay, so that was something a little bit different. If you like the videos that I'm putting out, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, share it with your friends. We're getting more and more people involved. We're touching all corners of the world and I love it. If you wanna check out citizensurgeon.com, I have some good resources there. And of course, if you wanna sign up for the Saturday newsletter, the Saturday Six, I'll send you an email of the six things that had me thinking or inspired that week, some interesting articles in medicine, some videos, podcasts I've been listening to, so maybe some music in the OR, and then of course, an opportunity to learn a few things. All right, well, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.